Hi there, this is just a video evidence piece uh, of a procedural um, panelling method I've been looking at inside Blender. So having conducted a paradigmatic analysis of many of my um, elements of inspiration, I've found that many of them have not only large scale detail, but lots of medium and fine detail. Now, the proposed output for my work is more so for visual effects, so mesh density is less of an issue. So with that in mind, I wanted to look at one method of creating panelled surfaces on both um, rectangular surfaces, but also spherical surfaces that may in fact speed up my workflow and allow me to kind of draw in and design panels rather than having to model them in a polygonal method. Um, so basically I was looking at a way of using modifiers to um, split edges, split seams to create a panelled look to elements in a very quick way. So this is a video of the process that I've been experimenting with and just to kind of evidence that process. So I am just going to simply add a sphere and I'm going to up the levels here. So maybe 32 and 64. Just so I've got quite a bit of um, faces here to work with, edge loops. Um, now I could start coming into edit mode and extrude different faces and treat each one separately. Um, but I wanted the idea that I could simply kind of draw in where I wanted panels to be. And I wanted to make this as procedural as possible. So I thought if I could use modifiers to do much of this work, then that would be great. So um, first off then, I'm just going to go into um, edge mode and I'm just going to select some edges. So I'm just going to come along here and just select some random edges. I'm going to control E to go into the edge uh, menu and I'm going to mark as sharp. So I'm just going to mark those as sharp edges and you'll see that nothing really changes. I'm going to put smoothing on for my whole surface. But underneath the hood, these have been marked as sharp and are denoted as such. So with that now marked as sharp, if I was to go into my modifier stack and put edge split on, we'll start to see that this is marking this as a sharp angle. Okay, based on that mark sharp category, I'm just going to turn edge angle off. The other thing then, I wanted to solidify that edge so we could um, we could give it some solid geometry. So I've put solidify on and you'll notice that if I look at my triangles now, they've jumped to 7,964. But if I um, if we put only rim on, then that basically doesn't solidify any back hidden faces because I only want to work with the surface. And that's really half the amount of tries, triangles there. So only rim was the, the option I went for. And then I'm going to work with beveling this surface. And I'm going to make this angle. And what we end up with now is this beveled edge, this kind of surface edge. So also I'm going to smoothing. There's a strange smoothing thing going on here. So I want to come to here and put auto smooth on and make it only 30 degrees. And we get this pin sharp kind of deformation. And this has meant we've changed nothing in the geometry, but everything is being applied in order with these modifiers. So we've got an edge split to split that edge that we've selected. We've then solidified that edge to kind of give it some geomet uh, geometry. And then we've got a bevel on here. And that's given us that edge. Um, I'm just going to change my uh, viewport. I'm going to change it to cycles. I'm going to come down to uh, mat cap for shading. And we'll put um, ambient occlusion on as well so we can start to see a little bit of this form. So let's see how versatile this is. Let's go into edit mode and we can continue to make some of these edges sharp. So we simply just control E, mark as sharp, come out and we have more edges. And we can literally paint in our panels. So with that in mind, I could take a whole edge loop by alt clicking on a loop, control E, mark sharp. And I now have a whole edge loop. 
I could come in here. Let's alt click this whole edge loop here, this edge loop here, and maybe this edge loop here. Control E, mark sharp, tab out of edit mode. And we have this ability to basically mark panels detail on this sphere. Now, if we find that these, this beveling detail is a bit too angular or it needs a bit more smoothing, we can come into our bevel option. We can change the amount of segments if we wish to our bevel. We can also um, change the width of our bevel if we wish. We could tighten it up. So we could dial this right down and make it a very fine bevel. Like so. And we have these pin sharp. We've got some aliasing obviously in the preview. Um, but in terms of rendering this out, let's put this into rendered view. We've got some nice rendered edges there. Let's come into our material just so we can see this thing. Let's add a, let's add a uh, anthroscopic, so we've put a kind of metallic sheen to this. Let's give it a bit of roughness, like so. And let's maybe just uh, load in, well, let's just load in a sky texture or something just to quickly see the quality of this. So as a method, uh, modeling panels has always been quite a laborious process or has resulted in the need for a great deal of uh, normal um, painting but actually with this method it's quite versatile and the beauty of this if I want to create a uniformly panelled sphere as I've seen in uh, many of my uh, inspiration then what I can simply do is tab into edit mode select all in edge mode control E mark as sharp and I've got a fully uniformly panelled structure which creates quite an interesting result. And if we go into rendered, there we go. So that's how um, I think this procedural method works and it works very easily for me. Um, our try count is still only 3,968. So fairly low for something fairly complex like that. I'm somewhat concerned about what we've got at the top here using that complete edge mode. We have gone into some very fine detail, but again, I wouldn't typically maybe sharpen right up to that point. I would exclude this. So if we were to tab into edit mode and maybe just select this edge loop here, control E and clear the sharp from there. Maybe if we would select all, control E, clear sharps. I think our mesh density has got a bit too detailed there. So let's just turn smoothing off. Yeah, we've got some engons in there, so we might just need to cap that off and sort this out. But fundamentally, Let's create some interesting results. Okay. So that's as my procedural method. I'm just going to try that out with the cube or so let's try this with a cube. Let's go out of edit mode. Add, uh, let's add mesh cube. So let's say we had a cubular structure. Now obviously this is going to need some subdivisions to mark as sharp. So I'm going to subdivide it a little bit like so. Let's apply our same methodology. So we're going to uh, edge split and turn edge angle off. We're then going to solidify those edges once they're split. 
and then we're going to bevel them like so and we're going to put a couple of segments on there and we're going to take the profile right down and we're going to put auto smooth on at 30 degrees and smooth shading so there we go we've got a beveled cube with a nice small bevel so hypothetically if I come into these lines and mark those as sharp control E mark sharp I'm getting a similar kind of paneled look to things which kind of works there so if I was to put an edge loop in Control R and slide an edge loop in here. Slide an edge loop in here. Control E, I could mark that as a sharp. That works again. I could come in here. Control E, mark sharp. That procedural panel method seems to be working quite well. So we could just come, let's just check, ah, my bevel is set to angle. I just missed that. I wondered why we're getting that strange anomaly. We have a panelled surface. So this is a quick way. And let's do only rim. So we tick that on and off. You can see the try count less and so on this cube. This is quite an effective way of adding panels to surface, flat surfaces as well as spherical surfaces so we could just paint in the edges that we want to select so using C I could just randomly come around and paint some edges control E mark sharp and I have a, a randomly detailed and panelled shape and so too on this. So if I come to this cube, I could subdivide uh, a few more. Sorry, let's, let's undo what I've just done there. Let's deselect everything. Let's, and let's just subdivide a few times more. And then I could come in Control E to mark sharp and we have more panels. So yeah, it's kind of painting with edges and panels using this uh, this stack of modifiers to do much of the work for us. Um, so I find that's quite a good way of using edge detail when geometry isn't the be all and end all. This could be done at normal levels uh, in the normal painting process but if you find that that's not as intuitive or mesh density is, is not so much an issue then this could be a way of doing uh, of doing that more economically okay my overall try count for the whole project is up at 28,000 that's the combination of the two so if I was to come in here we've got 3,000 tries for the whole sphere I have subdivided this far too many times. So yeah, you can see my try count has gone up to 4,000 on this entire sphere here. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's my paneling method using uh, modifiers, which could prove to be quite useful when doing fine to medium level geometry detail on, um, on shapes of various sizes and um, various um, different geometries. So thank you.